Swami Advaitanandji, Sri Anil Sachdev, Mr. Nene, all the respected Swamiji's ladies and gentlemen. I was thinking, my mind went back a few years ago, maybe 15 years ago, when I was in really a very depressed state, if I may say, and very bothered because we were undergoing a family separation. And as some of you who have gone through a family separation, especially when families are extremely close and then they decide to separate, would know that there is there are several issues that keep coming up, pulls and pushes, and sometimes one wonders that children of your family or you know nieces, nephews who you brought up, brothers, sisters, how do you deal with them? And should you really engage with them to see what is right or not? And that's the time when a learned Mahatma told me that have you ever realized why the Lord staged the Mahabharat thousands of years ago because he exactly knew that these situations keep coming up every time and in so many families. And then reminded me to read the first couple of chapters of the Gita which really said that we had to do our duty. We did not have to. I mean, it was cowardice if he said that we are going to fight against our cousins and against our nephews and against our brothers, but we had to do our duty. So that is just one practical lesson that I learned that day. And frankly, following that, I think, in the end, we came to a settlement which was perhaps the most amicable from all sides. I feel very small today to talk about the Gita. And I'm not a fool to talk in front of all these masters here of whom I don't even know a fraction of what they know. So with all hesitation, the only thing I can talk about is my understanding and how I have been able to apply it. And I will seek your pardon if I make mistakes, because this is a layman's understanding of the Gita. But I am indeed uh, grateful to Swami Chinmanan, who when I was young, I had only heard a few times. I remember he used to give uh, lectures at the NSCI on the Gita, and I had attended a few of them. But I had met him only once, but that was not, I would not say it was more darshan than actual interaction. But since then, I'm really indeed grateful to the Chinmaya mission to Pujya Guruji that he allowed us to have classes by Swami Swatmananji for the last 15 years, almost every week or every fortnight, where we've tried to absorb some of the lessons of the Gita. So let me say again with all humility that uh, I'm only going to share some of my experiences. 
which I think I have applied the Gita, whether right or wrong, is for you all to see. Also, since I felt that the only thing I can talk about is my experiences, this talk will be personal. And it's also, but please don't take it that I'm talking too much about myself, but that's how it will be. It'll also be about a fair amount of success, because according to me, at every stage when one applies the learnings of the Gita, one does get successful. Before I commence, another thought that came to my mind, I thought I will share. I think in some ways, I feel that we in India are really blessed to be born in India. So I've been trying to read the histories of many other nations. To my knowledge, no nation has produced as many great saints as our country has, and as many great saints it continues to produce. I mean, whether you look at Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you look at Ram Krishna, you look at Tukaram, you look at Gyaneshwar, Kabir, Sai Baba, Swami Chinmayanand, I don't know of any other nation that has produced and keeps producing. So I think all of us, in spite of all the things that we see in India, should feel indeed extremely blessed. I'm going to talk about uh, now some experiences. Whenever I meet people, whenever I think, uh, see some of the younger generation and many people in business, the first comment often one hears is that our Indian philosophy is very defeatist and very often it is not result oriented. And therefore it's quoted that you know you should not care for results, you only care for only how you do it. And that is a very negative way of looking at it and we are not result oriented. In fact it's to the contrary. As many of you must have experienced, I've found that really this understanding that results are just action in another form, that how we do the action really determines the result. If this deep understanding can be got, I think the results come out much better. And I remember this, we were in the midst of a very important negotiation a few years ago, and it was of significant value if we would have been successful with it, it would have made a significant profit for us. And if not, we would have remained where we were. During these negotiations, I know that this shlok was being discussed in our weekly class. And that's when I said that let's really try it out in practice. And rather than focusing on what would happen if we, if we were successful, if we were not, and worrying about what would have happened, we said let's focus on what needs to be done so that we can realize our result. And frankly, that's what made the difference we got a result much better than what we had ever expected, only because we focused on the whole action or the process. And a few months later, when we got closer to the other, the opposite negotiating party, you know, the, they actually told me that we were very surprised that very often we would provoke you to try and say, okay, the deal can't go through. We will walk away. 
and yet you remained unnerved. And that is what was your biggest strength. So it was not our strength. I think it was this deep learning that was there. So does it mean that the Gita says that we should not have high aspirations, we should not hope for a lot? I don't think that's true. Recently, just a few weeks ago, we had a senior management of our company off-site where we were thinking about, we were visioning, what was the vision for 2020? And all of us and everybody got enthusiastic, made a very, very inspiring vision. I mean, you know, multifold growth and so on. So does it mean that if we are talking about action and not results, we didn't talk about vision or we didn't talk about results? No. We wanted to have a result in 2020. But soon thereafter, we said, let's now focus on what do we need to do? Because we can keep imagining things, we can keep hoping for things, but unless and until we get down to actually doing it, we won't get there. And try to break down as much as we can as to what the process needs to be followed. This is not just for the future. I can see that, I can say that in 2003, we talked about what we should do in 2010. Again, very large numbers. But once we set the number in our mind, we just started focusing on what we need to do to get there. And frankly, when in 2003 we had thought of a number, and which most people thought was unreachable, we more than surpassed it in 2010, only because we focused on action. So in other words, I think it's such a practical and such a, you know, obvious thing to do, but we keep forgetting it. And that's what the Gita keeps reminding us of. <clears throat> Our group is not the biggest group. There are many groups there are many people who are bigger than us, more wealthier than us. But one thing that I think we could stand out amongst many, many other companies and groups in this country is on the basis of values. And our values are really what is based out of the Gita, knowledge, action and care, or gyan, karma, and bhakti. And we have today a business which is global. We employ people, more than 2,000 people in the US, 500 people in the UK, Germany, and so on. So all over the world, literally, we employ people. And I have found that whenever I have talked about these values, which, as I said, is knowledge, action, and care, I have found that there is an instant connect anywhere in the world. These people are not the ones, like this audience here, who's been exposed to the Gita or who's been exposed to whatever philosophy that we learn. So in other words, I think the Gita, to me, is the most secular of all texts. And it is the most practical. Because we found that when we practice this, when we practice knowledge, what do we mean by knowledge? We mean by knowledge is expertise in the subject that you're dealing with, in the matter, whatever it is in the business. We mean innovation, new ways of doing things. When we talk about action, we talk about entrepreneurship, we talk about integrity. 
And when we talk about care, we again talk about trusteeship, we talk about humility. These are all which we've got from the Gita. But these are so universal that it has an immediate connect with every single person. We talk about so many differences amongst religions and so on, but these are people who are from different faiths and yet believe in it. I'll give you an example, another one. We have a glass manufacturing plant which is in Gujarat. It's in a part of Gujarat where 40% of the employees are Muslim. Again, we follow the same values and believe me, each one of them can relate to it. So these are universal, uh, I think, truths that have been revealed to us, which makes it even more, which makes it so strong and so relevant, whether it is 5,000 years or not. In fact, I often, many people tell me that, you know, you have to read the Gita when you are old. We don't need to read it. We are still very young. Many of you are here, I guess, students. But then I am reminded of the fact that the Gita was told to Arjun, who was probably in his 30s, in the midst of the battlefield, in the midst of where there is maximum action. So rather than becoming a recluse and go in the Himalayas or go on the banks of the Ganges and uh, think and meditate, this is a real action. It is a book for people who are young, who are at the height of their careers. I want to talk about another concept uh, which we have learned in the Gita on trusteeship. The Gita, the Lord says that all the wealth that you have is really kept in trust with you. And that's been one of our foundations for our group again. We look at ourselves as trustees, trustees for all the beneficiaries. Our beneficiaries are our shareholders, beneficiaries are our employees, beneficiaries are customers and society. And when we start looking at it with that lens, and the role of a trustee is to see that the wealth that is given to that trustee from any from the settler technically or from the lord you get the best out of we've tried to follow this and each one of our people has followed it and frankly that has helped us to create much more wealth than we would have otherwise done for one uh, section the gita has taught has taught me to be equanimous I think there is no human being who doesn't go through highs and lows. All of us have our share of good times, bad times, great success, failures. But just keeping on remembering that this too will pass has been a, it's been a source of great strength for us. I think, Mr. Sajdev, you talked about fearlessness and courage. I think this has been one of the most inspiring things for me also in the Gita. It keeps talking about how a divine quality is of fearlessness. And if one tries to absorb and to and get that learning within, I think it is of great strength. And therefore, it has allowed us to go on the path less traveled. So we started our business with textiles. When that went through difficulty, fearlessly we went into pharmaceuticals. Beyond that, we went into financial services and so many other industries. Had it not been for this learning of the Gita to be fearless, 
to be full of courage, we would have never done that. I think it is truly, I feel blessed that all this learning and all this faith has really been bestowed upon me. The Gita, to me, is the most optimistic text, uh, text that anybody can read. The Lord keeps reminding us, do not grieve. I will protect you. I will carry your burden for you. And this has been really a source of great strength for me. I want to share a personal thing from my life. You will pardon me for doing that, but I think it's important because that's my faith, so I think I should show it to you. So this is the story which I keep saying of how there is this old man and a young boy who are walking on the beach. As they are walking on the beach, there are two sets of footprints that are there on the beach. All this is going on as a dream in the young boy's mind. He sees a set of two, two sets of footprints on the sand. Then he realizes that actually that journey on the beach with the old man is the journey of his life. And the old man is the Lord, and this is the boy is the boy. And he also realizes that at some times during that uh, journey, the, the sets of footprints break out. At times, there's only one set of footprints. On other times, there are two sets of footprints, one next to the other. And when he relates that to his own life, he finds that in the good times, there are two sets of footprints. And in the more challenging times of his life, there is just one set of footprints. And that, he says, it really upsets the boy in his dream. And he complains to the Lord that, oh Lord, in my most challenging times, you have forsaken me because I find that only in good times were you with me and in the difficult times there was just this one set of footprints. And that's when the Lord says that actually, my child, it was in those difficult times you see only one set of footprints because that's when I carried you. So that is the, when the Gita says in the ninth chapter on the 22nd shlok that I will protect you, I will carry your burden for you. So in my own life, <clears throat> I lost my father suddenly one day when I was 24. And uh, then I had an elder brother who was in business with me, who, was, who took over my father's position. He passed away when he was only 33 because he got cancer all of a sudden. So I was left with his three kids, wife, and a business which was in a loss, difficult times. But yet, I think, if I came out then, and if I came out stronger, it's only because the burden was carried by somebody else. And that is so true. Daily, I think, at least I experience that. And finally, I'm also going to end with what Swami Advaitanandji said, that if you have the Lord with you, and if you are his disciple, Arjuna, then there is definitely going to be success, victory, and prosperity. Thank you very much.